hello again students uh, welcome to uh, another uh, video lecture under your uh, course fundamental of accountancy business and management 2 so finally we could already move on in discussing the topics that we are supposed to discuss under this uh, course well uh, as i've discussed during your orientation this course is generally uh, divided into two parts okay so in the first part or in the first bulk of this course we will be uh, discussing about the uh, summarizing and the interpreting phase of your accounting process okay and in addition to that we uh, i will also teach you how to prepare later on a bank reconciliation statement okay and of course the uh, last bulk of this uh, course is of course taxation in relation to accounting all right so in this uh, first part of our lecture i will be uh, discussing your summarizing phase first okay and therefore you will be taught on how to uh, prepare now the various types of financial reports or financial statements all right so at the end of this lecture you should be able to uh, prepare already an income statement or a uh, statement of comprehensive income prepare a statement of changes in owner's equity your statement of financial position or also called as your balance uh, sheet okay you also have there to uh, or you also have to learn how to prepare now a uh, statement of cash flows okay so when we say complete set of financial statements okay you have there a list of the uh, financial reports or financial statements that a business must prepare at the end of every accounting period so a business should be able to prepare now an income statement or a statement of comprehensive income a statement of changes in owner's equity a balance sheet or a statement of financial position your statement of cash flows okay and these notes to financial statements well this one um, we uh, really uh, won't discuss how notes to financial statements are going to be prepared okay because this is more on the uh, or you will uh, deal with notes to financial statements when you are already in practice okay because notes to financial statements are basically the uh, summary of the significant accounting policies adopted by the business now in the preparation of the other financial reports or financial statements okay there are some computations also which may be uh, considered as explanatory notes on how we were able to uh, derive okay particular amounts okay or financial data in the other financial reports or financial statements so combine all those they will now be uh, uh, called notes to financial statements all right so let's per, uh, let's start in discussing first how to prepare an income statement or a statement of comprehensive income okay before we move on um, whenever you are uh, learning of a particular or mastering a particular financial report or financial statement okay there are uh, only uh, two things that i want you to always remember at the least okay in understanding a particular um, financial report or financial statement so the first question that you should ask yourself is what is the purpose okay why do we prepare this particular financial report or financial statement in the first place right because if you know the purpose then you uh, will be able to appreciate okay the uh, importance okay of preparing this particular report or financial statement to the business okay so what's in it in the business or what's in it for the business to prepare this type of financial report or financial statement that's the purpose once you're done uh, determining the purpose the next thing that you should ask yourself is what are the elements okay that must be uh, reflected in this particular financial report or financial statement now because these are the uh, essential um, accounts 
okay, that must be uh, reflected in this financial report okay it would help you to uh, easily recall okay how to uh, generally prepare the uh, form of this particular type of financial report or financial statement later on okay so for income statement or statement of comprehensive income huh, generally the purpose we uh, in preparing this particular financial report or financial statement is of course to uh, determine the results of the operations now of the business okay whenever you see the phrase results of operations of the business okay or simply the term operations uh, I want you to uh, immediately develop in your minds that it would have something to do with the uh, profit directed activities of the business okay it would have something to do with the uh, profit generating activities of the business here now okay so basically the uh, uh, only way for us to the determine how well the business performed is of course all right computing whether the operations resulted to a net income or a net loss okay so there is a uh, net income if the total income of the business is more than the total expenses of the business okay on the other hand if the uh, total income is lesser than the uh, total expenses of the business therefore it is an undesirable situation on the uh, part of the business here now then we call the difference as net loss all right so that's for the purpose now for the elements okay these are the uh, accounts that you should be uh, able to reflect now in an income statement or a statement of comprehensive income of course you have to uh, reflect there the uh, amount of the uh, income by the business depending on what type of business activity the uh, business is engaged in if it is a uh, service type of business then we call the uh, income of that business as revenue if the business is a merchandising or a manufacturing type of business then its income is uh, reflected in the report as sales okay so when we say income what how did we uh, um, define income before income diba? are the increases in the company's assets or company's capital okay well directly it affects the capital all right it refers to the uh, increases in the capital okay and such increase is directly attributed to the uh, profit generation activity of the business okay the fact that the business owners invested a particular amount of uh, capital in the business may uh, also result to the increase of the capital or the assets of the business but take note that investments by the owners are not really part of the uh, profit generation activity of the business so they may not be considered as part of your income okay but the uh, fees that you will collect when you render your service okay or the uh, money that you would be able to collect when the uh, business was able to uh, sell a particular product or goods okay we should say that it is part of the income because these amounts are directly attributed to the profit generation activity of the business okay so do not forget the definition of an income income this refers to uh, the uh, increases okay in the capital or the uh, assets of the business other than the uh, investments made by the owner or the owners now of the business meaning these increases are directly attributed now to the profit generation activities of the business okay you have there your cost of goods sold okay from the term itself cost of goods this is only uh, use in a manufacturing or a merchandising type of business because the products we uh, sell 
okay, to our customers in a merchandising or a manufacturing type of business are called goods. Okay. There are there is also what we call cost of services, but when you say cost of services, these are simply the expenses incurred in a uh, service type of business. But for a manufacturing or a merchandising type of business, we have a separate account, okay, to reflect the amount of the goods that the business was able to sell to its customers now, and that is the cost of goods sold account, okay. Now we also have here what we call your other incomes. Okay, if the uh, income is earned, okay, from another uh, activity, which is not part of the uh, regular profit generating activity of the business, meaning the regular course of the business, then we consider this increase in the capital as other incomes. Okay. So, for example, if the business is uh, regularly engaged, originally engaged in the selling of uh, baguong, okay, baguong products, all right, or any other type of goods for that matter, okay. So, if it is engaged in the selling of goods, then the uh, regular course of business, huh? the profit generating. Uh, mechanism of the business shall only be attributed from the uh, selling of this particular type of products right okay but if let's say for example the business has okay an available space beside its store okay it owns an idle space beside its store and it decided to rent it out to another person or another business the rent income that may be uh, collected okay from that uh, activity is not uh, really a part of the regular course of the business okay therefore whatever amount okay that may be collected from the renting out of space shall be considered as part of other incomes okay your other incomes again are increases in capital okay which are not considered of course as investment by the owner or the owners of the business and at the same time they are not derived from the regular profit generating activities of the business here now okay so that's for other incomes of course you have their expenses when we say expenses okay this is just the uh, opposite of income they result to a decrease in the uh, company's assets or the uh, company's capital and they may uh, they are also directly attributed to the uh, profit generating activity of the business okay if the uh, expense is not incurred in the regular course of the uh, business and at the same time they are not considered part as withdrawals or drawings by the owner or the owners of the business then we shall consider them as part of your other expenses okay, in the same way as how we explained other incomes okay expenses that are incurred not in the regular course of the business shall be considered part of us or part of your other expenses account all right so do not forget those elements because these are the very same elements that you are going to use okay in preparing now an income statement or statement of comprehensive income okay so let me just uh, show to you the instance when is there a uh, net income and when will uh, the business incur a net loss all right if the uh, total income okay if the total income of the business is more than its total expenses okay for a particular period of time at the end of a particular period of time then we say that the results of the operation resulted to a net income okay a net income of course is uh, favorable okay on the part of the business because it increases the wealth now of the owners of the business okay apart from increasing the uh, capital of the business 
it really is intended to increase now the wealth of the owners of the business okay so a net income should be reflected as a positive value in our uh, income statement all right on the other hand if what happened is that your income or the total amount of your income is less than the total amount of expenses incurred then the results of the operations of the business is a net loss okay a net loss on the other hand is of course an unfavorable situation on the part of the business because it decreases okay the wealth now of the owner or the owners of the business okay so do not forget the uh, instances when may the business be uh, said to have earned a net income and when may the business be said to have incurred a net loss okay so yeah this is very important because these are the uh, ultimate amounts or accounts that must be uh, reflected Okay, in an income statement or your statement of comprehensive income. Well, essentially, this is the purpose why we prepare an income statement in the first place to determine whether the results of the operations resulted to a net, a net income or a net loss. Okay, so, okay. Now, in preparing an income statement or a statement of comprehensive income, uh, there are various ways on how to present it. Okay? We call them your forms of income statement or the forms of uh, statement of comprehensive income. Okay? So, the two ways on how to present your income statement may refer to your nature of expense method or your function of expense method. Okay? The difference really uh, lies on how we are going to present the expenses incurred by the business. It does not really uh, talk about the manner on how we uh, should present the income earned by the business, but more on the manner on how the expenses shall be summarized in this particular report, okay? Such that under your uh, nature of expense method, your expenses are simply itemized in the report okay when you say itemized you are just simply going to uh, make a list okay of the uh, expenses incurred by the business now so you are not going to reclassify them into another group or other groups of expenses okay you are just simply going to make use the original accounts used in the journals or in the uh, ledger of the business here now okay so make a list of the expenses you itemize them then you are preparing a or you are using you are applying your nature of expense method okay on the other hand if you apply your function of expense method in preparing now an income statement then you should further reclassify your expenses according to what type of expense they are okay now generally we have or your expenses all types of expenses that are attributed now to the uh, profit generating activity of the business shall be considered your operating expenses okay so all types of expenses that are directly attributed to the profit generation activity of the business shall be considered operating expenses okay your operating expenses may be divided into two we have what we call your selling okay and your administrative expenses okay your selling is also called as distribution expenses so you may present them as selling and distribution expenses your administrative expenses may also be presented as administ general or administrative expenses here now. Okay, so well, that's the simple way on how to uh, distinguish between your nature of expense method and your function of expense method. So how are we going to present now the expense accounts in the uh, income statement or the uh, statement of comprehensive income? 
if the expenses are itemized then we are applying the nature of expense method but if the expenses are further classified either into selling or administrative expenses then we are really applying your function of expense method okay well um, in practice no in practice nature of expense method is usually used by a service type of business okay it is usually used by a service type of business where they just simply itemize the expenses incurred all right because in a uh, service type of business well it is not really engaged in the selling of goods right so there is really um, or there are no expenses that may be said to be um, related in the selling activity of the business because what a service type of business is doing is providing or rendering now of a service okay so nature of expense method is usually applied or used in a service type of business while your function of expense method well since we have there your selling and distribution ex um, expenses this is usually applied by merchandising or manufacturing types of businesses okay so let us discuss further your types of expenses when we uh, use your function of expense method all right so when we uh, say operating expense again operating expense class as i told you a while back is the uh, general term for all the expenses incurred by the business in its profit generating activity Okay. and your operating expense may be divided into two we said we have there your selling or your distribution expenses we also have there your administrative expenses or also called as your general and administrative expenses so how are we going to uh, uh, classify okay an expense as a selling or as administrative expense okay it is part of the selling expense if it is um, it involves okay the storage okay the preparation okay the uh, distribution all right sorry the distribution the uh, advertisement of the uh, goods that the business is selling okay so if the expense is attributed now to the storage to the preparation of the goods to the distribution of the goods to the customers and the advertisements which would now um, increase the sales of the business then they all refer to selling expenses okay anything that would uh, have something to do now with the product Okay, any expense that you could directly attribute to the product that the business is selling to its customers may be part of your selling expenses. On the other hand, administrative expenses are the uh, general office expenses okay, that are being incurred by the business. Okay, So this may refer to uh, utilities used in the building of the business, the communication expense, the rent expense or the amount of rent that we are paying for a particular space for example is part of your general expense because they may not be uh, generally attributed to the product that the business is selling to its customers okay the supplies expense okay the supplies that are being used in the office they are uh, usually classified under your general or administrative expenses Okay, so the uh, easier way, okay, for you to uh, classify whether an expense is a selling expense or an administrative expense, okay, is to determine whether such an expense, okay, may be directly attributed now to the storage, the preparation, 
the distribution or the advertisement of the products that the business is selling to its customers because if the answer is yes then this type of expense is part of your selling expense if the answer is no meaning they are not directly attributed to the things we listed here okay then they are part of your administrative expenses so do not forget that one because if in the problems later on you would be required to prepare an income statement using your function of expense then you should know how to uh, reclassify the expenses okay and determine whether they are part of your selling expenses or your administrative expenses all right so as we discussed a while back when we say uh, or when we uh, prepare an income statement or a uh, statement of comprehensive income for a service type of business the method or the form that is uh, usually used is the nature of expense method where we just simply uh, itemize the uh, specific expense accounts in the report okay so the uh, very same expense accounts that were uh, recorded in the journals or in the ledgers of the business will be the same accounts that will be reflected in the income statement if we uh, make use of your nature of expense okay take note that your function of expense may not necessarily be applicable for a service type of business because okay when we take a look at the nature of the uh, operations now of a service type of business it is not really engaged in the selling of goods or yeah it's not engaged in the selling of goods rather it is engaged in the provision okay or the rendering of services okay so it may not be uh, proper to look for expenses which are involved in the manufacturing the storage okay in the uh, distribution of the products because services are not really uh, stored services are not really uh, distributed okay they are not um, necessarily being manufactured unlike physical goods okay that's why I said under service type of businesses, the uh, form that is uh, usually used in preparing now an income statement is your nature of expense. Okay, so it would be different you know, if we uh, take into account a merchandising business because when we prepare for an income statement of a merchandise or a merchandising business, it may be uh, it may apply either of the two forms already so it could apply nature of expense method or function of expense okay under nature of expense just the same we are just simply going to uh, itemize okay we are going to itemize the specific accounts so list down all the specific expense accounts that were incurred by the business just uh, take note of this new account title here you have your cost of goods sold okay your cost of goods sold is not really an expense rather it is just uh, reflecting the total amount of the uh, cost of the uh, products that we were able to uh, sell now to our customers okay so how much did these particular products originally uh, cost okay and that will uh, basically be reflected as cost of goods sold okay under your uh, uh, function of expense still you have to separate there your cost of goods sold account and when we present now the uh, expenses uh, which we generally call uh, operating expenses we have to determine whether they are part of your selling or your administrative expenses okay so what is the easy way 
to determine whether an expense is part of your selling expense or a part of your administrative expense where we uh, we were able okay, to determine various activities which would immediately uh, tell us that this expense is a selling expense okay? such as if the expense is attributed now to the uh, manufacturing of the product okay the distribution of the product the advertisement that uh, were spent okay or the advertise the amount okay spent for the advertisement in the selling of products okay the uh, storage okay the cost of the uh, storage use uh, in storing now the products all of those would be directly attributed to the product therefore they shall be part of your selling expenses otherwise if the expense is not attributed to any of those that we have mentioned then they shall be part of your general or your administrative expense all right so yeah okay so we have to take note of this your sales here and your cost of goods sold okay because they should be um, presented you know they uh, should be presented in a separate um, computation which is called notes okay well, actually this is one of the components now of your notes to financial statement okay you may allow uh, you may be allowed to compute for the net sales or the cost of goods sold directly in the income statement or the statement of comprehensive income. However, um, many businesses still prefer you know, to separate the computation for the net sales and the computation for the cost of goods sold and they are going to be reflected as part of the notes to financial statement. Okay, So we have to take note on how to compute for the net sales. Take note that the sales that must be seen or that must be reflected under the income statement must already be the net sales okay so there is a way on how to determine now your net sales okay your cost of goods sold at the same time must be uh, derived okay in a, a separate computation and must be reflected as a notes to your income statement okay so let us uh, review how to compute for your net sales and your cost of goods sold okay for your net sales of course you have to uh, take note of the following accounts you have to uh, determine the uh, amount of your gross sales when you say gross sales nothing has been deducted yet it's the uh, the totality or uh, the total okay, amount of income without okay, uh, deducting any amount yet okay so from the gross sales we shall deduct these two you have your sales returns and allowances and your sales discount okay as a review sales returns and allowances refers to the amount of the uh, products that were returned to uh, the business now by reason of uh, being defective okay or that the product is not the uh, product that were uh, ordered by the customer so necessarily they have to return it back to the business all right and that must be deducted from the amount of our sales the same thing is true for your sales discount discount essentially are the uh, reductions okay in the okay these are the reductions in the um, amount of the uh, sales that we were able to have in a particular transaction so gross sales the total amount of sales less the amount of products that were returned less the amount of discount given to the uh, customers then we shall have your net sales here so this is the amount that is going to be uh, presented as sales now in the income statement all right now for your cost of goods sold okay you have to take note of the following accounts also you have merchandise inventory beginning purchases freight in 
okay your purchase returns and allowances and if i may add here you have here your discounts also okay purchase uh, discounts we have your total goods available for sale and your merchandise inventory end okay so where do we get the amount now of your merchandise inventory beginning the merchandise inventory beginning is the amount of the merchandise inventory reflected in the unadjusted trial balance of the business so if the trial balance is still considered unadjusted the amount of the merchandise inventory you see there is your merchandise inventory beginning okay now of course if the uh, business applies now your um, periodic okay method of inventory it uh, uses the temporary accounts purchases freight in your purchase returns and allowances and your purchase discounts okay so when the uh, business will purchase additional merchandise inventory it will be temporarily uh, uh, recorded as purchases okay freight in on the other hand is the amount of the uh, delivery cost okay the delivery cost uh, in purchasing now the uh, merchandise inventory so that if the delivery cost is called freight in then it shall be part of the uh, merchandise inventory of the business as well okay you have there your purchase returns and allowances this time in the on the point of view of the uh, business who is the buyer okay when the business will return inventories which it consider as defective then it shall reduce the amount of the uh, merchandise inventory and uh, therefore we have there your purchase returns and allowances if we were given now uh, discounts in the uh, inventories that well, we purchase no then it shall reduce as well the amount of our in uh, merchandise inventory okay so let me just uh, rewrite this uh, formula so you have there your merchandise inventory beginning okay you add your purchases the purchases the additional merchandise inventory that were purchased during the year and then your freight in the amount of delivery cost that is going to be uh, added to the amount of our merchandise inventory now if there are any uh, purchase returns and allowances we have to deduct it okay and of course if we were given discounts with the inventories that we purchase we also have to deduct it from the amount of our merchandise inventory okay so the resulting figure there okay the resulting figure there should give us what we call now your total goods available for sale so this is the total amount of goods that are um, available okay for the business to sell to its customers so have there your total goods available for sale and then we learned in fab m1 that under uh, your periodic inventory method how do we determine your merchandise inventory end the merchandise inventory end is determined through physical counting okay so the business will conduct a periodic physical counting of the remaining inventories that they are going to sell right so after uh, computing for the tigas therefore we may now deduct here the amount of inventory that were physically counted at the end of a particular period so minus that merchandise inventory then we will be able to compute now for your cost of goods sold okay so i should say you have to memorize this particular uh, formula okay in computing for the cost of goods sold because this is very important especially if the business applies the uh, periodic inventory method okay in its uh, accounting process okay so merchandise inventory beginning where do we uh, uh, get the amount of this uh, merchandise inventory beginning again 
the amount is lifted from the unadjusted trial balance okay the amount of the inventory in the unadjusted trial balance is the merchandise inventory beginning on the other hand your merchandise inventory end there's no other way for you to determine that but to uh, conduct a physical counting of what are of the inventories that are left okay in the uh, shelves or in the storage of the uh, business now okay so you have to uh, know very well how to uh, properly use these temporary accounts under periodic inventory method your purchases is the uh, account used for the additional purchases of merchandise inventory freight in is the delivery the delivery fee that is um, going to be uh, considered part okay added as part of the uh, merchandise inventory of the business and of course purchase returns and allowances these are your contra purchases account meaning they reduce the amount of your purchases returns when we return a particular merchandise inventory that we bought it shall reduce the amount of your purchases when we were given a uh, discount on the merchandise inventory that we bought it shall re uh, it shall reduce also okay the amount of our purchases okay so for us to uh, better understand okay the rules on how to prepare now an income statement or a comprehensive income let us try answering a problem all right so let's try to uh, answer a problem okay concerning now a uh, service type of business so according to uh, our discussion a while back if we are preparing for an income statement for a service type of business usually the uh, form or the method that is used okay in presenting the income statement is your nature of expense all right but before we uh, formally start in preparing the uh, financial statement or the income statement let us first identify okay the elements that must be uh, reflected in the income statement for Andrew repairs okay so what are the elements that need to uh, be reflected in our financial report here we have to determine the income and since this is a uh, service type of business the income is reflected as your revenue account okay after which we have to determine the expenses all right so for the expenses here we have various expenses incurred by Andrew repairs salaries expense okay we have your supplies expense your communication expense oh if you try to take a look at the problem the commute there are two communication expenses here maybe uh, it was uh, not intended to be a communication expense here but for purposes of answering this problem let us just add the amount of the uh, two communication expenses later on okay so communication expense we also have here your advertisement expense and lastly we have your depreciation expense all right so once you know the accounts that you uh, should reflect in your income statement already you may now formally start in preparing your income statement okay so in preparing your income statement it is important to uh, first know the rules on how to uh, make a report in general okay since this is a formal report or a formal document it is always important for us to uh, write first the uh, heading okay for that particular financial report and in writing the heading it is always a three-liner heading okay three-liner heading because we should uh, start writing the uh, name of the business first so this is how you should write the heading of a financial report the first line is 
the name of the business it should be centered the uh, name of the business okay then you have there the uh, type of report that you are preparing in this case we have your income statement but let's just write here type of report and of course the date within which or for which the accounts are applicable okay so let's uh, prepare now the uh, income statement for under repairs following the rules on how to uh, write a heading we start in writing first the name of the business here we have Andrew repairs okay next line is what type of financial report are we preparing we are preparing an income statement okay and then if we are preparing an income statement take note that the accounts you see in the income statement are all called temporary or nominal accounts when you say temporary or nominal accounts at the end of the accounting period the uh, amounts okay shall be brought down to zero balance okay so that for at the start of the next accounting period you will start a new okay in uh, accumulating now the amounts for your income statement accounts okay so again nominal accounts or temporary accounts are always closed okay and brought down to zero balance at the end of the accounting period so at the start of the uh, next accounting period okay the uh, balances of these particular accounts are still zero okay so income statement then since these are nominal account they are only applicable or they are only existing for a particular period of time and that would be only for the year ended December 31 2019 okay just fix this one it should be centered all right so now that we are done with the heading the next is to uh, put now the uh, elements that are uh, that should be seen in the income statement of Andrew repairs so in this case you write here the amount of the revenue earned by Andrew repairs how much is the total revenue there is 754,500 okay after computing for the revenue the next thing that we have to do now is to uh, of course um, deduct okay the total expenses that were incurred now by under repairs okay so what are the expenses again we have there your salaries expense do not forget to put an indention here it is very important so that your report would be uh, easy okay to uh, understand and be interpreted okay so salaries expense since this is a report you are not allowed to make shortcuts no for the words you have to write them down completely so salaries expense you have here your supplies expense you have your communication expense we said a while back that there are two communication expenses here but that is just a uh, you know a an error in writing down the type of expense so let's just combine the uh, amount of the two communication expenses in this problem so aside from communication expense we also have here your advertisement expense and lastly we have your depreciation expense okay so we put the amounts for these expenses 
salaries amounted to 51,000 supplies amounted to 8,000 your communication expense that is 5,400 plus 4,000 we have 9,400 your advertisement expense amounted to 3,000 pesos okay let's put a tick mark so that we know that we already uh, included them in our report your advertisement expense is okay all right your depreciation expense amounting to 90,000 so you total and put it beside how much is the total expenses incurred now by the business so that would be 51,000 plus 8,000 plus 9,400 plus 3,000 plus 90,000 pesos so we have a total of 161,400 okay so let's uh, counter check 51,000 plus 8,000 plus 9,400 plus Three thousand plus ninety thousand one sixty one four hundred. Okay, so now that we have the uh, values for our total revenue and total expenses, we may now compare the two. Okay, so that we will know whether the results of operation has resulted now to a net income or if it is a negative value to a net loss. So that would be. 754,500 minus 161,400 that will now give us a net income of 593,100 as easy as that okay so that's how you prepare okay an income statement for a service type of business again what method is used in this particular problem since this is a service type of business it would be more convenient to just simply itemize it therefore applying now your nature of expense method okay so take note we are just preparing your income statement therefore accounts that are not okay considered as elements of the income statement would have not thing to do okay in preparing now the income statement we'll have uh, we will use them later on when we uh, move on in preparing your financial statements already okay but for the meantime we only uh, deal with your income and your expense accounts okay so uh, let's move on in answering another uh, problem but this time we are going to uh, prepare now an income statement for a merchandising type of business okay now we uh, may be allowed already to apply whether or either of the uh, two forms of income statement therefore the uh, nature of expense and your function of expense method okay but before doing so there are certain uh, things that you have to uh, do first okay before we could uh, formally start preparing now the income statement for this merchandising business okay so in this problem uncle merchandising prepared its unadjusted trial balance for the year 2019 take note that the data given to us this time is an unadjusted trial balance okay therefore since it is unadjusted there are certain year and adjustments that we have to perform first all right the amounts that you see in an unadjusted trial balance meaning the amounts you see here okay are not yet the uh, final amounts that must be used in preparing the financial reports okay the amounts that ma uh, may uh, finally be used in preparing your financial re reports must be those that which are already reflected in adjusted trial balance so since we are uh, given for the meantime an unadjusted trial balance we have to first perform the necessary year-end adjustments okay so we have here the pertinent information that would now adjust the amounts okay 
of the uh, various accounts presented in our unadjusted trial balance okay so we have here the supplies at the year end amounted to 2000 number two the amount of depreciation on the vehicle amounted to 50000 pesos and the merchandise inventory as per uh, physical counting amounted to 136600 okay so let us prepare now the uh, necessary adjustments okay that we should uh, do in preparing now the adjusted trial balance for uncle merchandising okay so the first adjustment supplies okay we were told that the uh, supplies at the year end amounted to 2000 so if we try to take a look at the uh, amount of the unadjusted supplies it is originally 15000 so what should we do so that it would be reduced now to the amount of 2000 pesos well it uh, necessarily means that 13000 pesos is already used right so since there is already a use of a supply a use of a particular asset then it would be proper now for us to recognize an expense and what expense is that we have your supplies expense so debit your supplies expense for the first adjustment and what is going to be credited of course for the uh, supplies to amount to uh, 2000 pesos we have to reduce the supplies by how much we also reduce it by 13,000 pesos therefore credit your supplies account okay both for 13,000 pesos so what will be the effect okay in the uh, accounts here now so later on this should become 2,000 pesos and your salaries uh, your supplies expense this is going to be increased by 13,000 so later on this should be equal to 15,000 pesos okay that is 13,000 plus the 2,000 existing supplies expense okay so that's for the first adjusting entry now for the second adjusting entry we were told that the amount of the uh, depreciation on the vehicle amounted to 50,000 pesos okay there is only one pro forma entry on how to uh, adjust now your depreciation and on how to recognize an accumulated depreciation so you just memorize whenever there is a uh, need to depreciate a particular fixed asset the entry is this okay you have to debit of course your depreciation expense okay by how much by the amount of depreciation computed in this case we were given 50,000 pesos okay and of course you debit now your accumulated depreciation account okay your accumulated depreciation for the same amount of 50,000 pesos all right take note that your accumulated depreciation account is a contra asset account and when you say contra asset it reduces a particular or it reduces the value of a particular asset in this case since the depreciation is attributed now to the motor vehicle the accumulated depreciation therefore is the reduction in the value or in the cost now of the motor vehicle okay but your accumulated depreciation is not a uh, an income statement account okay this is actually a, a, a an account that shall be uh, reflected okay in your statement of financial position okay however your depreciation expense being an expense is an income statement account that's why it is still necessary for us to make such an adjustment okay and lastly all right we were told in this problem that the uh, amount of the uh, inventory at the end of the period is 136,600 okay take note when we discussed a while back how to compute for the uh, cost of goods sold your merchandise inventory beginning i told you where to get its value right the value of your merchandise inventory beginning shall be lifted from the uh, 
uh, unadjusted trial balance. Therefore, this 50,000 pesos that you see here is the value of the merchandise inventory beginning. Okay? So, we compute for the cost of goods sold so that we would be able to make the adjustment here now. Alright, so the cost of goods sold is... Uh, the cost of goods sold is computed by first identifying the amount of your merchandise inventory beginning. Okay, let me just uh, put my computation here. So, merchandise inventory beginning. What do we do next? We add. So, this is for the amount of cogs. We add now your purchases. Okay and your freight in if there are any all right freight in and of course we deduct your purchase returns and allowances and your purchase discounts so that we would be able to compute now for your total goods available for sale okay let's put values now to the formula so where do we get the value of your merchandise inventory beginning? The merchandise inventory beginning is from the amount of the merchandise inventory reflected in the unadjusted trial balance, which in this case is 50,000 pesos. Okay, Your purchases amounted to 310,000. So you just have to uh, put it there, 310,000. You have your freight in also, which should be added. So that's 5,000. Okay, if you try to take a look at the given, we have two confusing accounts here, freight in and freight out. Okay, it is only the freight in that is added to the purchases. Okay, but freight out really is uh, considered as an expense. Therefore, if the delivery cost is classified as a freight in, then you have to add the amount of that freight in to your purchases. But if the uh, delivery cost, on the other hand, is considered as a freight out, you do not add it to the amount of your purchases or to the amount of your merchandise inventory because it is really an expense. Take note of the difference. Freight in is added as part of the value of the merchandise inventory while freight out being an expense shall not be added to the amount of the merchandise inventory take note of that huh? so let's continue how much is the value now of your purchase returns and allowances that is 5,000 so we will deduct here your 5,000 pesos okay and then we have your purchase discounts amounting to 3,000 we will deduct that also okay so you get the balance that would be 50,000 plus 300,000 okay plus 5,000 pesos minus 5,000 purchase returns minus the discount of 3,000 pesos so how much is our total goods available for sale you should have computed there um, You should have computed there 357,000. Okay. 357,000 pesos. Alright. So that's the value of our total goods available for sale. Now to compute for the co uh, to uh, compute for the cost of goods sold, the next thing that we have to do is, uh, to do now is to deduct the amount of your merchandise inventory n and what did we discuss a while back your merchandise inventory n is determined by the physical counting of the remaining inventories in the business the inventories that are not yet sold by the business so in this case we were given the data that the unsold inventory at the end of the period amounted to 100 36,000. Why is my pen like that?
okay so the amount of our uh, merchandise inventory is 136,600 okay so compare the values we will now be able to compute for our cost of goods sold amounting to how much how much is our cost of goods sold here we have 357,000 minus 136,600 so the total amount of our cost of goods sold is 220,400 all right okay so once we're uh, done computing now for the uh, amount of our cost of goods sold we could already uh, prepare now the adjusting entry okay or the uh, adjustments in order to bring now the amount of merchandise inventory to 136,600 all right so in doing so there are two steps okay that needs to be done here okay so the steps that uh, we have to do is to first set up the uh, merchandise inventory okay the value of the merchandise inventory at the end okay of the accounting period and how do we do that we just have to debit your merchandise inventory and okay so how much is the value of your merchandise inventory and we have 136,000 600 okay and we credit now a temporary account called your income summary account your income summary account is used usually to uh, close now temporary accounts okay uh, like your income statement accounts when we are going to bring them later on to uh, zero balances we are going to make use of your income summary account in the same way we are going to close now your uh, temporary accounts which affect the merchandise inventory so we are also going to make use of your income summary account in this case so we credit for the meantime your income summary account for the same amount of 136,600 okay so after that the next step that we need to do now is we could already set up the uh, amount of your cost of goods sold here all right so how do we do that we just have to uh, reverse okay reverse all the uh, temporary accounts which affect the merchandise inventory against the income summary account and whatever amount is the difference will be the same amount of the cost of goods sold we have computed here so for you to better understand that let's do it step by step so what you do first is to determine the uh, temporary accounts that affect the merchandise inventory what are those again you have your purchases okay you have your freight in your purchase returns and allowances and your purchase discounts all of those are temporary accounts that also must have the uh, uh, must be closed against the merchandise inventory account so in order to close their amounts we have to reverse okay the uh, entries for these particular accounts when we say reverse if let's say for example purchases is originally under your debit side to uh, make it zero it should be credited okay that's how you reverse and close now an account so let's do it step by step purchases are originally debited therefore to close it we have to credit your purchase account okay so we have to debit your purchase account a credit sorry credit purchase how much is the amount of our purchase here we have 310,000 pesos okay next your freight in okay your freight in is originally debited therefore to close its amount we have to credit it so credit freight in we have 5,000 pesos next we have purchase returns and allowances they are originally uh, credited therefore to close them we have to debit this time 
So you have your purchase, returns, and allowances, cre uh, debit for the amount of 5000 Okay. And next, you have your purchase discounts. Originally, they are cre credited. Therefore, to close them, we have to debit your purchase discounts now. Okay. So for the amount of 3 thousand pesos all right now the next thing that you have to do after closing now the uh, temporary accounts is to reverse also the amount of your merchandise inventory beginning so the amount of your merchandise inventory beginning is fifty thousand pesos this one okay take note of this now uh, then after closing the temporary accounts we have to close also the amount of your merchandise inventory beginning so to close it if the merchandise inventory beginning is originally debited okay we therefore have to credit it this time so you have your merchandise inventory beginning to be credited for the amount of fifty thousand pesos okay so the last step in making the adjustment here is to recognize now your ah no, you cannot recognize it yet you uh, have to first reverse your income summary account okay recorded under a step a here so your income summary is originally credited for 136,000 right uh, 136,600 therefore to close its amount Okay, if it is originally credited here, to close it, we have to debit it, income summary, for the amount of 136,600. Alright, so after uh, doing all those, we can now recognize your cost of goods sold here. Whatever difference between the debit and the credit uh, side is, okay, the difference will always be debited to your cost of goods sold account so take note that the cost of goods sold here that we were able to compute is 220,400 therefore the cost of goods sold that must be uh, computed here should also amount to 22400 meaning the difference between the total of this and the total of this shall amount to 220,400 so let's check if the uh, computation is correct all right so that total debit side is 5,000 plus 3,000 plus 136,600 all right how much did uh, you total you should get 144,600 okay and your total uh, credit side is 300, uh, 310,000 plus 5,000 plus 50,000 Okay, you should have uh, computed 365,000. Okay, so you get the difference between these two. You have 365,000 minus 144,600. How much did you get? You should have get or you should have computed 220,400, which is the same value as we have computed here it's not magic it's just accounting okay so when you try to compare this 365,000 minus 144,600 the resulting value is 224,000 which is the value for the cost of goods sold here the same value that we have computed here all right this one so we're all good we're done with our adjustments already then we just have to prepare now your adjusted trial balance okay let's just incorporate the amounts to your adjusted trial balance all right so let's move on okay so after performing now this is your adjusted trial balance okay i already prepared here a uh, 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 um, your adjusted trial balance we just have to fill in the amounts here so let's prepare is the cash affected no so we just have to copy the cash 35,000 
the accounts receivable is not affected 63,000 is the merchandise inventory affected yes and we adjusted it to 136,600 right now your supplies is also affected the remaining supplies is now 2,000 your motor vehicle is uh, shall not be affected but it will be reduced by the amount of the accumulated depreciation so we have here your accumulated depreciation amounting to 136,000 your uh, no no 50,000 which we have credited a while back so let me just show you again what uh, did we do with your accumulated depreciation here we credited it okay so we add here an account accumulated depreciation 50,000 okay and your depreciation expense since there's no depreciation expense yet we have to add an account for depreciation expense and we debited here an amount of 50,000 okay so the motor vehicle stays to be 300,000 pesos okay I think I have read I copied the wrong amount for the land and building this should be nine hundred thousand okay so we go now to the credit side accounts payable was not affected by the adjustment so copy thirty thousand copy twelve thousand fifteen thousand okay your thirty five thousand your one point two million four hundred fifty three thousand nine hundred okay so your sales is yeah your sales returns not affected by the adjustments therefore you just have to copy it also 2000 your purchases they are now zero so there's no balance for purchases because if we try to take a look at our adjustment your temporary accounts purchases freight in merchandise inventory beginning purchase discount and purchase returns and allowances are all closed already so in your adjusted trial balance the amount of purchases is zero your freight in is zero already your purchase returns and allowances is zero already your purchase discount is also zero already okay so next we copy your expenses so salaries expense not affected by the adjustment 61,000 how about your supplies expense yes we uh, adjusted your supplies expense we debited additional 13,000 so your supplies expense should now be equal to 15,000 pesos okay we have two communication expenses here again all right uh, let's just uh, use them uh, let's just copy them just the same later on we adjust we just add the values okay so that we would be able to prepare this uh, report so 2000 copy your advertisement expense nothing has changed 3000 okay 1900 you copy it just the same 2500 we copy it just the same okay so are there other adjustments that we need to uh, do here yes take note that in the uh, adjustment for the cost of goods sold what did we do we recognize a uh, an additional account in the form of your cost of goods sold and what did we do with your cost of goods sold we debited its amount so it should also be reflected in your adjusted trial balance therefore we recognize your cost of goods sold okay debited for the amount of 220,000 Okay, 220,400. Alright, take note that this is a trial balance. This is a trial balance. Alright, therefore, if we uh, still total the amounts of your debit side and your credit side, we should still come up with equal balances for debit and credit. So let's try because if they did not equal, there may be uh, uh, along the process, we may 
have um, done something wrong. Okay, so let's total. We have 35,000 for cash plus 63,000 plus 136,600 for the uh, merchandise inventory end plus 2,000 plus 900,000 for the um, land and building plus 300,000 for the uh, motor vehicle plus 1,500 plus 2,000 plus 61,000 okay plus 15,000 plus 2,000 plus 3,000 plus 1,900 plus I'm already in the freight out 2,500 plus 50,000 uh, uh, depreciation expense and your cost of goods sold amounting to 220,400 okay so how much is the uh, total for the debit side I was able to compute a total of 1,795,900 okay before we total your credit side let us uh, counter check okay so again 35,000 plus 63,000 plus 136,600 plus 2,000 plus 900,000 plus 300,000 plus 1,500 plus 2,000 plus 61,000 I'm already in salaries expense plus your supplies expense of 15,000 plus 2,000 plus 3,000 plus 1,900 plus 2,500 plus your depreciation effect expense of 50,000 and your cost of goods sold of 220,400 so yeah this is correct I still got 1,795,900 you should get the same total when you already compute for the credit side so let's try okay we have here 30,000 okay so we start here plus 12,000 plus 15,000 okay plus 35,000 plus 1 million 200,000 your sales of 453,900 and your accumulated depreciation amounting to 50,000 so we were able to compute the same balance of 1,795,900 so in this case we can already prepare the income statement for uncle merchandising okay so we can now uh, prepare the uh, income statement for uncle merchandising here so in this particular problem we are required to prepare now an income statement using your nature of expense and your function of expense method all right here we have here a uh, better presentation of the adjusted trial balance for uncle merchandising so we already integrated here the adjusted balances or amounts of the accounts all right so first things first okay we have to uh, prepare the heading for the income statement so we have to write the name of the business this is uncle merchandising Okay, we have or we are preparing now an income statement. And since we are dealing with temporary or nominal accounts, the proper way to date the report is to use the phrase for the year ended.
for the year ended December 31, 2019. Okay? So, we are now ready to prepare your income statement. So, the first thing that we have to uh, do is to determine how much is the income earned by the business. So, in this case, we have a sales right since this is a merchandising type of business the income is reflected as sales however take a look at your adjusted trial balance sales of 453,900 is the gross sales here because your sales returns and allowances and your sales discounts are not yet deducted what did i tell you a while back how in preparing your income statement i told you that the amount of sales must already be the amount okay of the net sales meaning the sales that is reflected in your income statement should already be the net sales so we have to first compute okay compute first for the net sales so how do we compute for your net sales again we have gross sales less sales returns and allowances and your sales discounts okay so how much is our gross sales in this case we have 453,900 minus the returns and allowances of 1,500 minus the discount of 2,000 pesos okay so the uh, amount okay let's just fix this one so that it could still accommodate spaces later on all right so again gross sales amounted to 453,900 minus 15 okay minus your discount of 2,000 all right so how much is our net sales here the net sales amounted to 453,900 minus 15 minus 2,000. So we have 450,400. Okay. So the sales that must be reflected in our income statement, therefore, is 450,000. 400 not the 453,900 because that is still in its gross amount the sales that must be reflected in your income statement should be in its net amount already okay let's continue further okay in a merchandising business we said we have to deduct from the sales the amount of the cost of goods sold that we have computed since this is a report complete everything huh? so cost of goods sold how much is the cost of goods sold we have computed that's 220,400 okay so you compare their values we should be able to compute for the gross profit when you say gross profit re it, re it is really the amount of the markup okay that the business earned from selling that particular product now so in this case the markup or the uh, gross profit amounted to how much 450400 minus 220400 so we should get a gross profit amounting now to 230000 pesos okay so since this is a nature of expense all right all we have to do is to deduct the expenses by itemizing them okay so we just have to itemize the very same expenses that are reflected in our books here so how do we do that we start with your salaries ex expense okay we have your supplies expense here we have your communication expense so as i told you a while back there are two communication expenses here this is just an error of typing the problem we just have to add the two okay so aside from communication expense we have advertisement expense 
okay advertisement expense and your depreciation expense and look at this one there is freight out it is different from freight in huh? i'll repeat freight out is an expense freight in is part of the merchandise inventory so in this case we are also going to consider it as an expense all right so let's determine the amount of the expenses shown in the problem we have uh, your salaries expense amounting to 61,000 pesos your supplies expense amounted to 15,000 pesos your communication expense 2,000 plus this one so 2,000 plus 1,900 how much is that 3,900 right and your advertisement expense of uh, 3,000 the depreciation expense of 50,000 pesos and finally your freight out of 2,500 pesos okay so you just get the total of the expenses that would be 61,000 plus 15,000 plus 3,900 plus 3,000 plus 50,000 plus 2,500 Okay, so you should have computed your total expenses as 135,400. Okay, let's counter check. 61,000 plus 15,000 plus 3,900 plus 3,000 plus 50,000 plus 2,500. So, yeah, that's correct. 135,400. Okay, so... We are now ready to compare the amount of the gross profit from the uh, total expenses to uh, determine whether the result of the operations resulted to a net, net income or a net loss here. Okay, So to do so, that would be 230,000 minus 135,400. So we have a net income amounting to 94,600 pesos as easy as that okay so that is for the nature of expense what if we are required now to make use of your function of expense method well it's uh, still easy it's still simple you know uh, we don't really have to change the uh, first part of your income statement because the only difference between your nature of expense and your function of expense is the manner on how we are going to present our um, uh, expenses okay. okay so let us uh, first identify whether the uh, expenses are considered part of your selling or administrative expenses okay so let us read first the uh, information okay which would help us now in determining okay whether expense is part of your selling or your administrative expense so in this case we were told that 20 percent of the salaries were paid to uh, office personnel while 80 percent were paid to the selling department so in this case your salaries okay of 61,000 pesos okay is distributed to the selling department and your office personnel okay so selling of course the amount of the uh, salaries paid to the uh, sales department should be uh, uh, part of your selling expenses okay or distribution expenses while the uh, salaries paid to the office personnel since they are not directly attributed now to the storing to the uh, production to the manufacturing to the delivery to the advertisement of the product then they shall be part of your administrative expenses okay so this is uh, 20% uh, no, no. this is 80% okay and this is 20% so how much is 80% of your 61,000 so that would be 61,000 times 80% we have 48,800 salaries expense for your uh, 
under your selling expenses and then the uh, remaining 20% so 20% times 61,000 for the salaries expense we have 12,200 salaries expense for your administrative expenses okay so let's uh, put them here you have selling expenses we have to indent that okay so selling expense your selling expenses are okay what are the selling expenses that we have identified first your salaries expense okay amounting to how much the salaries expense amounted to 48,800 okay this is the 80 percent of that 61,000 pesos okay on the other hand for your administrative expense okay we also have here the salaries expenses paid to office personnel Okay, which is 12,200 okay so that's 12,200 there next so we're done already with the salaries expense here next is supplies expense supplies expense they are not um, generally used in the storing in the production in the advertisement therefore they are more of to be a uh, um, attributed as part of your administrative expense so you put them here supplies expense amounting now to 15,000 pesos okay next your communication expense of course I uh, always attribute communication expense as part of administrative expenses for purposes of office functions okay so our communication expense amounted to how much is our communication expense here since uh, due to the error let's just uh, combine the amount so that is 3,900 pesos that 2,000 and 1,900 okay and we have here your advertisement all right from the term itself immediately you would know that it is intended for the selling of the product already so advertisement expense is part of your selling expense for the amount of three thousand pesos okay and we have here of course your depreciation expense depreciation expense um, Actually, depreciation expense may either be selling or administrative expenses depending on um, the uh, usage of that particular asset now. So our asset being depreciated in this uh, problem is our motor vehicle, right? If the motor vehicle is used in the selling of goods, then the depreciation expense would be uh, considered more as part of your selling expenses. But if the motor vehicle is not used in the delivery of goods rather it is used for the uh, utility now of the office personnel or the uh, workers of the business then it's more of as part of your administrative expense generally when you say depreciation expense since this is a motor vehicle and a uh, merchandising business more likely the motor vehicle is used for delivering right so let's just consider it as part of your selling expense so depreciation expense therefore is 50,000 additional to your selling expenses and lastly we have here your freight out from the term itself immediately you know that already it's the delivery cost therefore it is under your selling expenses so the amount of freight out amounting to 2500 all right then you get their totals for your total selling expense that it's 48800 plus 3000 plus 50000 plus 2500 okay so we have a total selling expense of 
104,300. Okay. So, on the other hand, the total administrative expenses should be 12,200 plus 15,000 plus 3,900. So, this is 31,100. All right. You just deduct the uh, values of the uh, selling expenses and administrative expenses from the gross profit, then we should still be able to get the same amount of net income or net loss. In this case, a while back, we were able to compute for a net income. And how much is that? That is 230,000 uh, minus 104,000 for the selling expenses minus 31,100 for the administrative expenses so the uh, net income is still for the same amount of 94,600 okay so that's how easy it is to prepare an income statement for a, a service type of business and a uh, merchandising type of business okay if it is a service type of business, it's very easy. When you prepare, on the other hand, an income statement for a merchandising type of business, it's still relatively easy, but um, it's uh, it involves more process. Okay, it involves more process. Therefore, it uh, makes it look more complicated. But if you just follow the process, okay, as how we have answered it in our lecture, then nothing will go wrong all right so there review points in preparing an income statement of course you have to know the purpose why do we prepare an income statement okay we have answered that a while back what are the elements of an income statement we were already able to identify those what are the forms of income statement we just prepared uh, income statement using both your na nature of expense and your function of expense so you should know that already and of course you should know between okay, net income and net loss when is there a net income of course if the total income is more than the total expense then there's a net income on the other hand if the income is uh, less than the total expenses incurred then there is a net loss so that is how we prepare an income statement.